ゥトゥトゥトゥトゥルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルSpider-Man Homecoming is a great MCU Marvel movie that unfortunately restrains it from becoming a good or even memorable Spider-Man movie. I'll tell you more right after this. What up guys, Akasun here and here is my official Spider-Man Homecoming review. I will try not to get into too many spoilers. I'll probably, there wasn't really much to spoil other than some plot twists and such. But let's get into it. First and foremost, one of the things I do want to make clear is I am a huge, huge, huge Spider-Man fan. I'm actually more of a Venom fan than anything, but I just want to let you know. Huge, okay? Huge. Love Spider-Man. I'm a big Spider-Man of Spider-Man in the 90s, though, uh, going into the early 2000s. So I think my preference upon things is a little bit different right now. So getting that out the way, I just want to let you know that, again, Spider-Man Homecoming was a good, good film. It was a good MCU film. But did it really feel like a Spider-Man movie? I'll get more into that as we go on. Let's talk about the good things, though, that I did like about Spider-Man Homecoming. <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming was the perfect mix of what happens when two different studios finally get along. You saw a little bit of what Sony was been doing, what they've been trying to do, what they were wanting to do for the future, and then you also saw what the MCU, or Marvel Studios, has really been wanting, chomping at the bits to do with their own Spider-Man. A lot of older fans will recognize that the Spider-Man costume and a lot of the looks and feel was from the early Steve Ditko area with the Spider original Spider-Man costume, but yet Newer fans, and especially younger fans, will recognize it as the ultimate Spider-Man line that was introduced around, I believe, 2008-2009 by Brian Michael Bennis and Mark Bagley. And the reason I say that a lot is because we do have a very young Peter Parker, a very young Spider-Man, a Spider-Man that isn't really as well in depth as you, we've seen in previous versions of Spider-Man brought to you by Sony, and while I personally was kind of a bit bored with the idea of going through the whole high school years again for the third time here. I understand where Marvel is trying to come from here and I understand where they're trying to go in terms of the future of the MCU. You know, we have to realize that Captain America and Spider uh Captain America and Iron Man were introduced about 8 years ago here into the MCU and they're not going to be able to do this forever. They can't do this dance forever. As we shift further into phase four, phase five, we're going to need this new blood of heroes to go ahead and take over from where Captain America and Iron Man are going to leave us at some point, hopefully, maybe, around Avengers 3, Avengers 4, we don't know. But sooner or later, we are going to need that new breed of Avengers to launch us into the future and carry the MCU for another eight years. And I kind of feel that's what they're prepping baby Spider-Man for. With that being said, Peter Parker's introduction into the MCU as a high schooler doing a damn thing and everybody being very, very young and Iron Man being the mentor worked very well for fans of the Ultimate Spider-Man line and fans that are looking, younger fans that are just getting into the MCU. You could even consider this, I kind of joked around earlier when I was seeing the IMAX posters and it feels kind of insulting to say but it really did sort of feel like an introductory MCU, like baby's first Marvel movie or something like that. For those that have not been able to keep up with the 14 other Marvel movies, this is a pretty damn good starting point, just like Peter Parker, into the MCU. For that, they pulled it off 
flawlessly. And for longtime MCU fans that have been keeping up with all the changes, especially post-Civil War, it, had, it was kind of interesting to see all the little nitty bit of changes that have been happening going on with Tony Stark's life, with the world in general, and just it leaves you begging, begging for the next Avengers film, which we probably won't get any more updates in on Earth anyways. Uh, when we get to see Thor Ragnarok. Probably won't see many more changes after that. No, 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 not much. We're going to get right into it pretty much in the next Avengers film. I believe it's safe to say that Michael Keaton as the Vulture has really set himself as a very good Marvel villain. That's something that, for some reason, people complain about a lot, that Marvel doesn't have villains. I think he was great in this film. I think he was really up there on that sort of street level that we needed. Not the Cosmo levels where Loki is at and now he's doing that thing over there. We had the street level guy and at first it was a little weird what he was trying to portray uh, with his thugs and his group and such but after a while I really started to get interested into him and the uh, scene with him in the car with Tom Holland was absolutely chilling. He really got you to crap your pants mentally along with Peter Parker in that back seat. On top of that, as any sort of good intriguing villain does, he really made you rethink maybe he is on the right side. His comparisons, his often comparisons to Tony Stark and his methods of doing things aren't necessarily illegal because Tony Stark, that's what made a name out of Tony Stark, doing ex exactly the same thing but just on a larger military scale. So great work by Michael Keaton, and without giving spoilers away, it was very interesting to see the world building they're going to be doing around him and other villains, and I can't wait to see him back, hopefully very, very soon. Well, I for one was extremely impressed with what they were doing post-Civil War and just the feeling of post-Civil War, giving that serious tone that they're not friends, the Avengers aren't talking anymore, everything's kind of messed up. Spider-Man Homecoming is actually a welcomed sort of change of pace and it's basically maybe the funniest Marvel film I have seen in a long time. I was busting a gut like continuously. Jokes, jokes on top of jokes and I think as much as people like to criticize the MCU for having too many jokes and too much humor in their movies, I think for a Spider-Man movie, that's exactly what it needs. Spider-Man and Deadpool, you could say, are kind of equally on that same sort of pattern in terms of jokes and comedy, while Deadpool's going to be a little more raunchier and sort of um, black jokes type of style. Uh, the other one, the off-color type of jokes, right? Uh, I think Spider-Man fits in more with the general audience and it really just helps the pacing really helped move the movie along with all the humor and such and I, I found it very welcomed. Will it be memorable down the line? I don't know. Sometimes the humor sort of detracted from the kind of Spider-Man that I like in like okay let's get down to business Spidey but I think for generally again the younger audience this is exactly what in, uh, Marvel's game plan was and what they really wanted to do going into this Spider-Man movie. Laugh it up, it's a high schooler, let's just have fun with it and let's play it safe and let's go with what works with Spider-Man. I hope down the line things get a little more serious for the kind of Spider-Man comics I'm familiar with but I think for now it was a good change of pace given what happened post-Civil War. Everyone seems just a little bit happier, especially Tony Stark. Yeah. Seeing your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man in the deep burrows of the Bronx doing Spider-Man things, just being a kind of neighborhood guy really helped establish this kind of grounded element that they're going with with this particular Spider-Man. He's still young. He's still learning the ropes. He's still busting up crimes that aren't necessarily crime, still looking for crimes, just bored out of his mind. It was really nice to see, see this element of Spider-Man that we really hadn't seen from any of the other Spider-Man movies. Generally speaking, we see Peter Parker doing his, the damn thing in his 
crappy costume, then he gets his crazy expensive looking costume, and he's already in Midtown swinging it up and doing bigger out of this world type of ventures. This particular Spider-Man, we saw him pretty much grounded throughout the entire time, and it was kind of refreshing to see just the local neighborhood just being like, hey yo Spidey, like that. Really good stuff, I really like that, although here we go into all the contradictions and what I sort of didn't like. Let's go. So as I was mentioning earlier folks, this seems to be the perfect marriage of what Sony has always been wanting to do and what they had in mind for Spider-Man and what the MCU or Marvel Studios has always wanted to do as well had they got in their hands on Spider-Man just a little bit earlier. That being said, it's a perfect fusion. It works very well. Spider-Man just goes in there like perfectly with the MCU. But at the same time, at the cost of losing what made Spider-Man so iconic in all his previous films, it's sort of like taking Batman and then you throw him into the Justice League and if it wasn't for what we got in Justice League Unlimited in the Justice League series that was done by Bruce Timm so beautifully, still making Batman so Batman, we just would have gotten like a D rank sort of character and I kind of feel like that's what happened with Spider-Man Homecoming. We got Spider-Man in there but it wasn't really that badass Spider-Man, that over iconic sort of figure that I was used to and that was a little sad for me to see that. Gone was the very iconic horns of the soundtrack, the great music this, when you see him uh, web-slinging in Midtown, just over buildings, doing amazing stunts, just truly being amazing in every version of his uh, previous films, no matter if you liked them or hated them, you always saw him pulling off some really damn cool stuff. And that was one of the things I really recalled years ago when they even talked about bringing Spider-Man over to the MCU. I had my, I was one of those rare people that had a big hesitation. It's like, no matter how bad they're doing with Sony, I always felt like, look, this is Sony's property. This is their baby. They're going to keep on making movies, but at least it'll be about Spider-Man. And I was always worried that when, if they ever brought Spider-Man over to the MCU, he was going to get sort of demoted, so to speak. In other terms, this is like a wrestler coming from Ring of Honor or another sort of smaller faction. Doesn't make as much money, but they're, they're the top dog right there. But when they move over to the WWE, they get buried, so to speak. I feel like Tony Stark was the John Cena or the Triple H right now and Spider-Man is a buried wrestler that used to be hot shit somewhere else but now he's sort of gotten pushed down a little bit and you know just wait your time in a few years don't worry in a few years you might you might be up here kid but right now stay close to the ground sound familiar yeah think about it for a second gone is the sort of Peter Parker genius I mean he's still smart and such but I really, I wouldn't say I had a big problem with it, but I also felt that while a lot of people really liked the fact that the earlier Spider-Man movies, his web shooters were gone and it was natural, I kind of felt the same way when Tony Stark basically was doing everything. Including Spider-Man in this MCU and this relationship with Tony Stark and Iron Man and all that, I didn't really feel like I was getting that same sort of Peter Parker just doing the damn thing on a street level type of deal, making his own costume. As cool as that new suit was, I didn't realize that in Civil War that it was so mechanical. I didn't realize that this was basically going to be a Spider-Man, an Iron Man version of a Spider-Man costume. Being so mechanical, doing so many things, having your an AI and everything. It just seemed to take away a lot of what I was used to for Spider-Man. Again, I realized, I don't know if the, I didn't, I never really read much of the Ultimate line by Bennis, but I don't, so I don't know if it was 
as mechanical as that and with holograms and all this it even had like a, a, a HUD program and such I don't know if all of that was there but I just felt as someone who grew up with Spider-Man especially in the 90s someone who was already married to Mary Jane mind you but um, just having this more street level sensible everyday man level of uh, of uh, being a crime fighter and such having the whole mechanical thing sort of just felt like I was watching maybe another Iron Man movie basically are looking at basically Peter Stark or Tony Stark Jr. in training eventually will become the next Iron Man or something or Iron Spider or whatever but you didn't hear that spoiler from me not at all so I feel like that was a bit of a takeaway from what Peter Parker really was is we really weren't seeing so much of a guy who was bit by a radioactive spider and given miraculous powers more or less as more of a smart kid who impressed Tony Stark and was given a spider type suit. I know that's not what happened but we didn't really get to see truly how amazing Spider-Man powers really were. There wasn't any sense of a spider sense. We could see that he could crawl. We, he did the whole crawling thing, but it just seemed like it really focused a lot more on what the suit could do, and it always basically somehow went back to Tony Stark, whether it be Happy, his assistants, his company. The reason everything was, it was basically a big time Spider-Man getting shrunken down, moderated into and basically just living in Tony Stark's world or in the Avengers world and going back to what I was saying earlier if they ever thought about buying the rights to X-Men that's I feel that's exactly what hap would happen again is basically the X-Men would just be live the, the X-Men wouldn't be part of the MCU they would essentially be living in an Avenger universe and an Avenger world because it's already happened it's already starting here I hope in time that in sequels a Spider-Man universe can truly grow and become independent on its own. As a longtime comic book fan, when you pick up, as far as I know, from for I don't know if it's changed now, but when you pick up a Spider-Man comic book, every once in a while you'll see a crossover, and if it's an actual team-up issue, they're going to be around for a while, but for the majority of the time, you don't see people being mentioned in other other people's comic books not that often unless it's a big event. I want to see exactly what James Gunn has done with Guardians of the Galaxy with Spider-Man. They're part of the MCU, I get that, but you don't really need to mention the MCU all the time. Just tell a good story surrounding that universe and just every once in a while you can throw some tidbits in. I realize that this relationship is special and it, it's there and maybe it's going to be around for a good amount of time but the spider spider-man himself just has an entirely great universe that has sold many many comics great rogues gallery I think the only person that could really rival that would be the Batman honestly the Batman's world his universe is so iconic I think Spider-Man does exactly the same thing and I think there's a lot of room there. I just hope it grows out fully without really having to always name drop Tony Stark or the Avengers or the Battle of New York or the Chitauri and the... And again, I have to reiterate, the previous Spider-Man movies, whether you loved them or you hated them or whatever, you can't deny that each one tried very, very hard to make you love Spider-Man. The music was good, the directing was fine, their stunts were good, but everything was organized around making Spider-Man look really good. Even if it was a shitty villain, you still saw Spider-Man look damn good, right? This is not here in Spider-Man Homecoming. The Vulture was great, let's not get that out the way. The Vulture was great, but the music really isn't there. It's it's an it's an MCU film. Many reasons why 
other previous directors like um, uh, Ant-Man and such, we've had problems and directors have left is because the director really couldn't bring out their vision a lot and they needed to moderate it to make it a Marvel film and fit with the Marvel Universe. I get it. I know why that works. I know what's going on here. There's, there is a plan. And again, it works great for the MCU, but I just feel the lack of that iconic music and the soundtrack really moderates our Spider-Man. See? They're sending send the ambulance right to Marvel Studios right now. Speaking too much truth. The only other thing that I'm gonna point out for you guys is this whole idea about the diversity thing and I felt like many others kind of felt like sort of changes were made just for the fact of having changes, just for the sake of diversity, but didn't really help the story. This inclusion of all these different characters playing uh, Peter Parker's iconic friends, Liz, Flash, whoever, and just whatever, just having them um, different race, different color, I, that part doesn't bother me as much as the fact that the characters just didn't really match, particularly people like Flash, um, who was played by an Indian person this time around. I don't care that he's Indian, but he just wasn't really intimidating at all. I didn't really find him to be that bully that Flash is supposed to be. If they don't want him to be that, it's fine. He doesn't have to be intimidating, but he just was no point. He had really, he didn't really have much of a point to the story. And then this entire idea of borrowing and sampling a lot of stuff from Miles Morales and having a uh, Gindy or Jindy, whatever his name is, the big guy, be Peter Parker's best friend, was that really necessary? Was he really needed for the story to help Peter Parker out? become a better person. I, I don't know. I didn't I didn't really understand why they really needed him, especially when there was maybe too much of a supporting cast in Spider-Man Homecoming. You had a lot of things, a lot of things going on and a lot of different supporting characters. You had a lot of stuff growing here um, in Peter's universe, but at the same time you had a lot of supporting characters just already established in the MCU. It's, it was just a little weird that you're going to grab something else out of the Ultimate Universe that doesn't even belong to Peter's original origin and give him a best buddy. I don't know if all of this was really needed, and I also worry about that when Miles will eventually show up. Did I say that? Yes, I did. I hope you guys m noticed that little hint there several times, actually, in Spider-Man Homecoming. We'll save that for a spoiler review one day. Maybe. We'll see. Chat. <laughs> so, overall, guys, like I was saying, Spider-Man Homecoming is a great MCU film, but at the same time, restrains my Spider-Man, the Spider-Man, from being the definitive Spider-Man right now, at this point, and just kind of restrained him from being just a memorable Spider-Man movie down the line. Are we liking it right now? Yeah, it's great. But we always like things that are great when the previous movie was that damn bad. Just think about it all the time. We like Wonder Woman a lot just because the previous DCEU movies were not exactly what people were expecting. Anytime we, something new comes along, we always think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. But I guarantee you, over the years to come, Spider-Man Homecoming will not be as memorable or really as good as you might think. That being said, I am looking forward to the next Spider-Man film and the next one after that. I think Tom Holland is a really good Peter Parker. He's maybe the best Peter Parker I've ever seen. His Spider-Man, as a young Spider-Man, it's, it's workable. I'm dealing with it. It's a little hard to believe with the... Uh, CG suit and all that other stuff sometimes. I wish it was a little bit more grounded. I wish he would ditch a lot of those costumes in the future. I hope he doesn't have an AI assistant in the near future, but um, I'm fine with the route they're going so far and I'm sure that in time I'll adjust to it a little bit more. I can't wait to see him in his inclusion in Avengers uh, Infinity War and such. I don't know, I don't think he's going to be as powerful as I'm hoping, so I feel like they're going to nerf him a bit, because he really seemed a lot more powerful in previous Spider-Man films, but 
you never know in time we'll see what's up okay till next time guys take care of yourselves and uh, let's see what's up with the next Marvel movie and next comic book movie okay I hope you liked this review like share subscribe and I'll check you on the next one wait no it's fib yeah